it's a pleasure to be here uh, thank you trinanjan thank you everybody uh, i think anupam has made my life very easy because he referred to the highless trial and all those stuff okay and i have really no conflicts to disclose uh, okay how do we move Yeah, that's what I'm trying to move, sir. Ah, slight change is different, right? Okay, we'll do it. Manually, कर सकते हैं हाँ मैनुअली ओ ग्रेट विल डू इट नो प्रॉब्लम आई एम हैप्पी टू डू दैट ओके सो सो वी आर लर्निंग अबाउट द एस बी आर टी आई थिंक द होल पर्पज ऑफ डूइंग दिस वॉज वी हैव टू बी वेरी सेंसिटिव दैट वी आर गिविंग बियॉन्ड कन्वेंशनल डोजेस इन अ वेरी वेरी कन्फॉर्मल वे एंड in a very short period of time and it is like in a festival you know if you are given only one shot you have to be really precise if you have given 30 shots you can do here and there and you can make a smear out of it so zero error technically so that's what uh, it is important and the worst part is that 67% they were discussing they were discussing about in a across the hall how much to give at the edge or the physicist physicist perspective it is really really a serious business because you want to give a high dose in the center and a rapid fall off right so the whole hylas trial was that are you ready to prescribe at 67% and are you ready to accept even at small dot of 150 probably not allowed so most of the time we play really safe safe and we have not burnt our fingers because we were in the range of 90 around 90 or 85 90 93 so that's the reason i think we were safe even we had a larger tumor even if we have a little central or ultra central tumor and definitely it is a attractive proposition for any patient uh, it's like coming daily and going out and uh, we can give a reasonable comparison overall survival so this is i think uh, we have discussed in length how do we do at tmh and i think um, at many other places it's almost the same barring small minor here and there and um, but as a clinician i think uh, owners start from the right the day zero you see a patient and how best we can negotiate the patient to a good local control and ultimately for his survival so the timmer man was the big bull in the american way and he really pushed the whole business of uh, high dose per fraction against many of his chairs right because at that point of time it was not uh, rewarding in a capitalist state with money you know you can't complete the treatment within few fractions so that even that code was not made at that point of time so he had to take really a big bunt but when it started moving uh, even the codes were changed even the insurance company were forced to change uh their codes because uh insurance company were getting huge money out of it good control means in a short time it means it was rewarding for the insurance company the guys are going to give more money you know so they change the code so that was the whole purpose that still many people are stuck to that five fraction business you know in us and if it is even astro and everybody says five fraction you can't go beyond that even to do a eight fraction the code changes there fortunately it is not for us huh? 
so but irrespective of that financial uh, background the controls were really in the order of 90% you know and three year and five year control who they thought they are doomed guys and this is pre driver mutation errors so they were really really very happy on that and the whole world started taking a big note of it but there was some downside we were learning about it the moment the the what we realized in his subsequent studies that few patients are having excessive toxicity and if we go through the background of the literature it is something 10 times more and when they did even in a such a small subject uh, even 70 patient it is not a smart idea to a multivariate analysis right because the outcomes are going to be very small in number and change but still they came out and say with a conviction that tumor location is more important and followed by the size of the tumor so so when we started with we will not do more than 5 cm right that was the one of the thing but then they subsequently came out no tumor location is as well important maybe more important if you want to have a toxicity profile and free from toxicity and you see the difference you know the toxicity differences but in such a small study there was no differences in overall survival so the bottom line was how to get rid of the toxicities eh? classical of american we start with the top and then we come down or the britishers way we go up from first to fifth floor so probably we are british trained in the, our mind so we said okay we will escalate the doses okay so then they gave and sepenold in her uh, thesis with timmerman group they gave a concept of something what we say pbt or a proximal bronchial tree okay and they classically said it as no fly zone in their one of her nice uh, paper she wrote at probably this is a no fly zone and it was nothing very simplified way you know elegant way to say that you draw your peripheral bronchial tree on a contouring station a draw 2 cm expansion right and in that 2 cm expansion what it will contain is till your right and left lower lobe bronchi and some of the secondary ones okay so this is depicted on this picture but people are yes not satisfied we will start go on working on and understanding the biology and toxicity so over the period if you see every 6 years something is changing right so you need to have some studies at 3 years 5 years and what we have realized is in rtog the chang and group gave uh, ultimately what is a really a sensible no fly zone we understood only the proximal the probably the bronchus was a problem then we understood no media sinus was also a problem but now we understand and with um, the resources from the breast group by dara sarvi that even the heart is a challenge so we came out anything in the media sinus structure within that 2 cm and realize that 2 cm is that has been really constant so please apply the mind and you may come out with something much more brilliant to say that maybe 5 mm was great because anupam did on a mr linac and the hylas guy says anything which is abutting it or within the 5 mm and 7 mm or oh, really half era right, probably okay so half half marathon that okay i am not a marathon guy deepak continue so we were talking about any radiation oncologist we are always worried about um, parallel in the serial organ probably what we realized the central structures or the media sinus structures are always almost having a problem and that too within a short period of time and they can be from the bronchopulmonary hemorrhage which can be fatal to a late effect of a stenosis which can cause in a already already compromised copd patient a pneumonia a sepsis and ultimately the death right so your stenosis is important structure are important 
as well as the hemorrhage is important, which may ultimately may cause a terminal event. Don't forget the esophagus. All these hollow organs, even if you treat a small dose, okay, you may land up in a perforation or even a cause of a fistula and that may lead to shortening of life. So what we understood, these are um, classical serial organs and most important, most of these guys are on some concomitant medication. Blood thinners are common thing. So they land up in doing a pulmonary hemorrhage very quickly. So what we learned in IMRT right from day zero, that we need to contour everything because if you don't contour everything, the IMRT or the VMAT deposits the dump which has not been contoured. And that was one of the reasons I think uh, that led to a fatal hemorrhages. Even a small volume or a point dose is classically important. You know, if you give more fractions, it may smear it out. But if you give small fractions, it may not smear it out and may cause a grade 3 and grade 5 issues. So, another thing what we learned from this was dose per fraction is very important. So, when they started with 53 after the heterogeneity, 54 in 3 after heterogeneity corrections, it was 18 gray in 3. But subsequently, we came out to 10 and now in my mind, it is still 7, 7.5 7, or 8 gray per fraction. Okay, But many people are practicing around 10 gray. So that is fair enough. So most of them in their, I think the European guys are doing a risk adapted approach. And if you see that, if you do a risk adapted approach, your likelihood of a toxicity is not going to be there. So there were hardly any grade three grade toxicity. So it appears to me as one of the ideal way to move forward. And definitely on the basis of your tumor size, you are going to get a tumor control. So I think Anupam didn't mention this study RTOG 813. Uh, so this is an important study. I think uh, Andrea Bezak has done a great thing in introducing this study. So there were different chairs for in RTOG for even for a comorbidity, there was a chair in this group. So it is so such an important thing to, for me to understand. And it is not a classical phase one, phase two study. Phase one, phase two, what we understand and have been read that you reach some uh, level and then you increase the level and then you go on. So what they did was, uh, depending upon the time which comes, they gave the doses. So the first step was taken at something like 10 gray and then subsequently, but they continued to follow. They didn't stop at that component at 10 gray and that led to good things. And they came out with something called maximum tolerated dose. So if uh, you are interested really in the statistics of a radiation oncology and what is the way out to juggle the late effects, this is the paper to be read. Okay. So I will not go much in detail twice, but what it showed that 12 gray is probably the uh, maximum tolerated dose. You should not go beyond that at any point in that central tumors. So this is our um, unpublished data of a 50 patients, first 50 of a central tumor and reasonably okay. So then they came up something of a concept of ultra central tumor. What uh, Anupam was mentioning was something like a tumor. Let's say that in a simple term, either it is encroaching the central structures of esophagus bronchus, okay, or they are abutting it or even infiltrating it. So that is in essence what it is and definitely they could make it out between the studies that central and ultra central definitely behaves in a different way and we need to be very very cautious from the safety perspective so again this is a tetkali's paper so if you don't respect the ptv in a 
really nice way in an ultracentral tumor you are likely to have a death okay very soon within first year and and why it is important to think that we need to treat the ultracentral tumor sometimes um, like in one of our oligomet studies or few of the studies on a recurrent case where the pneumonectomy has been done like in this patient uh, there was a single deposit right so you have to be very sensitive there is only one lung and you still need to contour that and treat this okay and there are several studies to say that how do you respect the hyler or a media sinus node so when they did this studies i think the outcomes were different and they are reasonably okay in a recurrent or in the nodal studies so boss bottom line is what good balance between the toxicity and the control and as a radiation oncologist we have always respected the oars and that is our bottom but use the good fractionation max fractionation we use 5 gray in ultra central and give to 10 fractions you may go up to a little bit higher but be cautious because your volumes are going to be important so uh, many of us has flown flying is a serious business and the bottom line of any flying if you see there are so many checklist every time checklist 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 okay and the basic principle there is also safety and the if you think safety is important you have to be proactive okay and how do we 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 do a safe practice do protracted course do protracted course okay i don't know how many knows pet maverick mitchell can somebody tell me navin i think he knows about it navin yes please tell me we had a discussion some chat two weeks back in our departmental meeting top gun 2 okay be a top gun don't be adventurous that you do a crash and you repent okay fly seriously fly safely that's the bottom line so be a good top gun who flies safely okay thank you i'm ready for any questions pulmonary rehab okay um so many a times uh, venita th- that is our first opportunity that they have gone to any pulmonologist right they have their habits over the years they are coughing but they have really not underwent uh, and see, seen any uh, done any exercise or anything for uh, their chest business so for me uh, pulmonary rehab is simply um, just cleaning the tracheo area uh, tree that is one expanding the alveolus doing those exercise improving their uh, basically fe fvc right and if they can improve their fvc and and with training they can improve their fvc one second also so for me that is a pulmonary rehab and they if that goes in the habit that they need to clean up the system that continues and that will help them so that ql is not deteriorated yes dear ah so you know we have a different grades of ild so uh, simple the chap who is huffing puffing is not our business okay he is going to die within a year and with a 90% chance than the tumor itself so that is a no no secondly we treat the patients with ild but with a very high caution and we are very cautious that our d2 cm or r50 is as narrow as possible so sometimes um, we have internal discussion whether to give a ctv or not to see the ct to that patient right so those are the small tricks what we do but uh, we are very reluctant to treat or anybody is reluctant to treat with a classical bad ild 
because the complication rates are again very high, acute especially. That is the reason. Uh, honestly, we have not done it. Uh, I think there are literature, but you can have a literature on a simply on a basis of ERCC one. That is the most commonly uh, can be practiced in a, any path lab. Those patients who are ERCC one are going to respond much better to SBRT like a platinum rather than not. So that is one of the tricks you can apply, but we have not applied that. So any experience on SDRT single dose in lung SBRT? Experience? Single I dose SBRT. I always tie my horses to the others. They don't, don't. But we have done, I think, two, Naveen. So we have done, uh, that was metastatic. Okay. And both were, I think, uh, one was head neck metastatic, one was, I think, the other one. But I, I really, uh, dis I don't like that. So we are having a case, we are thinking of doing it as SDRT. So I was thinking, what dose should we go for uh, 34 in single, like 19.5 or? No, no, I, I don't go that jump. Okay. 34, I think many times people want to practice that. Hum kar sakte hai. Unne ka aap karo. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, no, that's my thought. Uh, you people are smart. When you have a lesion of 1.5 centimeter, you can do that. But many times people have a 0.5 centimeter, they want to do that 34 gray. I think those slides ke bich mein nahi rahe, mere pato. My eyesight are weak. So I, I, I'm a bit cautious, but, but uh, there are technologies available. Like uh, Shoffel said that you are not seeing things, but AI is seeing that this can cause a challenge. So something will come up those things, then you can practice. But I think um, my protraction is better than the top fence. That's my call. That is personal opinion. Okay. And people are doing um, good 34 one, 32 in one with, and there is a background literature. I can't uh, deny that. Sir, Dr. Vinay here. Sir, do you give constraint to uh, like bronchioles, small airways? Yeah, any, so, any so that RTOG 813 has written down that less than 3 cc, what should be the DVH for the primary uh, bronchus as well as the, like the trachea and the bronchus, they are given that. Smaller airways also. Not very small airways, but primarily the secondary bronchus they have given, less than 130 BD. So, uh, can I ask a quick question? Close to the METS versus Come the this primary. Side, yeah, your number is there. Oh, no, no, Prius. I think Upasna is here. So, dose, dose to the primary versus the metastatic, do you really change it? Like here in the in primary, we are always I going got your to. Point. So, there is a literature depending upon what METS it is, you can change it. But at this point of time, we are keeping it same if you are going uh, very aggressive. We just want to ablate that, right? That is the reason like 16, uh, 5, or you are giving 54 in 3 or something like that. So that was the whole point that uh, they just want to ablate it and bunt it out. So we have not changed it. But there is a literature that in few patients, you can uh, uh, really reduce the dose so that you had an opportunity to re-radiate if something comes up again in that. So that was one of the thought process. So I agree with your point between seven to 10 gray per fraction may be sufficient rather than going to the do, more dose per fraction, either across the tumor, it may be a peripheral or this, the dose remains the same. Yeah. Okay. I think in the Thank interest you. of time, we have to close it. Overshot? Yeah, I mean, you're still yeah. flying in the no flying zones. Come out, come out of that. Thank you. Thank you, JP. It was very interesting. And I must say thank that you again, uh, Engine and everybody. Entire session was very interesting and very informative. Um, now,